If you have spent any time at all paying attention to the political climate in the U.S. specifically, but to a lesser extent also Europe, you may have heard the terms alt-right and far-right being thrown around relatively a lot. Now, I myself don't consider myself alt-right, and I have expressed where I land politically many times, so moving on from that, today I will explain why my general opinion is that alt-right is such a loosely defined term that it's near negligible when it's tossed around. Now I'll start with the Merriam-Webster definition of alt-right, as you can see here. As you can see, they use the terms extremist beliefs. Now, considering how ambiguous that can be and how often some relatively common views have been espoused with extremist beliefs or far-right beliefs, the reality is that outside of some unsavory characters coming out as alt-right, such as Richard Spencer, there is no way to frame up a structural cage that could be strict enough to contain the alt-right. Well, unless... if you consider the seemingly obsessive behavior towards white nationalism. Now, keep in mind, I said white nationalism, not nationalism. And I call attention to this definition here. And keep in mind, this is what will pop up if you simply Google nationalism definition. While it starts out relatively benign, patriotic principles or efforts. You'll notice the synonyms might make you wince a little bit, such as chauvinism, xenophobia. Now, if you look at the diff definition in World War I era of American history, you will find this. Obviously worded differently, depending on the source, but overall the general sentiment is a nation comes first as well as our cultural as well as our car culture, excuse me, amongst other things, which personally I could describe myself to that way of thinking. I do believe that our nation comes first and our culture is important. However, this ties into what I was speaking about before when it came to nationalism. You see, simply being a nationalist isn't being a white nationalist. Any citizen of any country, regardless of their skin, religion, or sexual orientation, can be a nationalist for the country they are living in. So why does the modern definition conflate the word with synonyms like chauvinism and xenophobia? Well, call it a conspiracy theory or just seeing the forest of the trees, that's up to you. However, I believe the definitions have been changed so that one can attribute nationalism with an inherently evil movement such as chauvinism. Now, I'm not a political pundit, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed either, but even I can tell you there's a difference between patriotism and aggressive patriotism. This allows for loosely defined movements, such as the alt-right, to have people labeled as such despite not claiming allegiance or sharing all of the views of that particular movement, that movement being the alt-right. Not everybody in the alt-right describes everything that goes into the alt-right. A lot of, and some would say that this is simply the alt-light, but I'm sticking with the alt-right for now because it's the topic of this video. An example, we have the likes of Sargon of Akkad, who himself calls, you know, uh, uh, labels himself as a liberal, being referred to as an alt-writer, despite his fiscal views being very much so attributed with the alt with the left. So what does this mean? While the likes of Richard Spencer and David Duke have very clear white nationalistic beliefs, these might be the only thing that anyone could attribute to the alt-right that separates them from the rest of the right wing and, well, to this extent, also centrism nowadays. But yet, people that don't hold those views are called alt-right. Well, simply put, it's essentially a way to shut down people, as you can see here. From the New York Times, from uh, after Charlottesville, which I covered already, so I'm going to be covering the details within again. But I'm using this example to make a point. They try to say that the terms both sides and all the left are lexicon of the far right. See, the thing is, 
when you say that, you're essentially saying those that are aware of the alt-left or Antifa and call them out for their legitimate issues are alt-right. So, you know, a majority of the country is apparently alt-right now. So, essentially, you are saying that if you believe in those views, that you are alt-right. You are bolstering the numbers by basically painting it with a very, very thick layer of whitewash. But, so you know, a majority of the country, or excuse me, so this is why the ambiguity creates a situation where the numbers of the alt-right grow, because when terminology, the far right, is attributed to innocuous things, such as the usage of a term that is confined to a group that exists and is infamous, People suddenly come to the conclusion that far right means common sense. So this creates a bridge, as it were, where people who are simply right or center right or moderate right, whatever you prefer, become alt right. Maybe they're just nationalists, not white nationalists. Maybe they're center right, but not quite right wing enough to be considered right wing. Realistically, these people aren't alt-right, but when they're repetitively told that they are, they may be pushed that way. As, as an example, they are essentially sitting on the edge of a very tall cliff, and on the, other, uh, the bottom you have far-right extremists and the alt-right as a whole with their white nationalistic views. And at the top of that cliff, this boulder being this person who is merely just right-wing, conservative, or center-right-leaning person, is sitting without any force whatsoever to push it off until along comes somebody that is, well, usually ultra-left, that refers to them as a Nazi, or fascist, or racist. You name the slur, I'm sure it'll get slung around. But, essentially what that does is it puts them in a position where they realize necessarily for the better, that regardless of what they do or what they say, their nationalistic views will become white nationalistic views to in the eyes of the general populace. And therefore, they have no reason whatsoever to ascribe themselves to something that is far more moderate and far more sensical than something like nationalism versus white nationalism. So, at the end of the day, and in conclusion, I am in no way, shape, or form alt-right. Like, as I've mentioned before many a time, I am center-right, more of a libertarian than anything else. But, a word to the left. Do not conflate everybody with the alt-right, because you're only going to simply push people to the extreme, to the alt-right. The best way to fight identity politics isn't with more identity politics. It's with common sense, logic, and understanding. However, at the end of the day, the alt-right still has a very loosely defined term because there are people who are members of the alt-right who do not believe or subscribe to the beliefs that other more extreme alt-writers do. As usual with most things that involve human beings, there's a lot of nuance depending on the individual's personal beliefs, understandings, personal life experiences, and upbringing. And with that said, I feel like I've rambled on long enough, and this is obviously different than my usual Thursday video. However, I wanted to bring this up and do a discussion on it, because quite frankly, I've never done a study like this before and do a movement that I didn't have a complete understanding of. So, it was fun. And with that, to those of you that are watching and are within the borders of the United States, happy Thanksgiving. And to the rest of you, happy Thursday, the 23rd of November. So, I will see all you glorious cunts next week back on my usual schedule and tirades. And have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and or evening. I will see you later.